years later, um, <laughs> still, you know, enjoying the experience, talking about it, meeting people who share that uh, that enjoyment. I really want to apologize because I, I remember it being a much more interesting story. Oh, you want to be interesting? <laughs> yeah. Well, I was a uh, <laughs> samurai warrior. <laughs> <laughs> and black belt. And I. That's the one I remember. Yeah, that was. I'm sorry. And uh, uh, <laughs> King Kong was in there or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and you Bride had, of Frankenstein. Yeah, yeah, and you had yeah. to go Superman. I, that's the story I remember. I don't want to tell that to my family. I started uh, in radio when I was 15 years old uh, back in uh, Peoria, Illinois where I'm from, and um, that's how I got to, into, that, that led to, uh, you know, I started as a disc jockey, playing Beatles records, and James Brown, and things like that, and I always had done, I was a class clown, you know, believe it or not, <clears throat> and I always had, you know, gotten in trouble in school doing impressions of people I'd seen on television, doing cartoon voices. I always say I wish I had a nickel for, I, I do have a nickel for every, teacher or counselor or probation officer <laughs> who said to me at some point, you know, Larry, I hope when you grow up you find a way to make a living from your little jokes and funny voices. <laughs> so that's how I got started. And because I would, I, uh, as a disc jockey, I, I would incorporate cartoon voices and impressions of famous people into my radio show. And then that led to people asking me to do them on commercials, you know. And then on, on uh, like as Peter said, then came along this uh, this uh, thing that none of us in New York really had done because all the animation up until then, all the animated shows uh, that we grew up with and that uh, everybody had seen before, Thundercats, I think, had been done in L.A. or uh, maybe some of Florida at Disney Studios, but. Uh, it was unheard of that an animated show was going to be recorded in New York, and we ended up doing quite a few of them. Thundercats, Silverhawks, Tiger Sharks, or as, as we uh, say, uh, adjective noun. Adjective noun, Thundercats, Tiger Sharks. I was told there'd be no grammar. Before you were out that day. Our class, our yeah, class didn't get that. Our class Sorry. didn't get that. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's my story, and I'm sticking with it. Your, your typical day for voice acting, like when it starts, how long it is, I mean, the long yeah, day. There's no thing. typical day. I mean, it's... Yeah. Um, it starts at 8 o'clock in the morning, morning till 7 at night. It's just no let up. It's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Horrible. It's, yeah. They, no. It's a, it, it, like Larry said, there is no such thing as a typical day. I mean, uh, Larry is, you know, one of the busier guys in the business, I would say. Certainly has been for, you know, we've done lots of different kinds of work in the field. Um, I came into this not from radio or from theater, uh, so I was more, you know, specifically in voiceover, uh, although I did from time to time over the years had the, the pleasure of doing an on-camera commercial, uh, but it was whenever the agent called with an audition, uh, it could be, you know, you could have one or two things in a given day and have the rest of the day off, uh, it could be running from different place. Uh, doing whatever it was required of the audition, and when you got work, you usually had to reserve, they would reserve an hour, two hours, depending on the kind of work. Sometimes it, you, you'd go in and you'd be done in 15 minutes, sometimes an hour and a half later, you'd be working on the same sentence because you had six different people in the control room from the agency, from the, the, the client, you know, whoever, whatever product was saying, no, no, could you stress the a little more? No, I don't think he, I think he's stressing the too much. <laughs> you know, so, and then you would go on to whatever was next. But the day just came together with, maybe the day before you'd find out uh, what your appointments were the next day. Yeah, there's also a seasonal uh, fluctuation, especially in the commercial voice, you're doing, doing radio and TV commercials. Uh, we find usually that the summer is very slow, um, fall is very busy because they're doing commercials for the new TV show, the new, the new episodes that they're starting in the fall. Uh, things get very slow around holiday time from, you know, from 
the second week of December, usually until February, there's very little work done. Because they've already done whatever commercials they're going to do for the holidays. Yeah. So, you know, that's yeah. Already, that work is already so you have that, and then uh, the fact that, that individually, um, it may be very busy generally for the voiceover acting community, but you may find for whatever reason that this, the kind of stuff you do is not in demand this too much for a few months. You know, it really fluctuates. The point is that, that there's no typical day where, uh, for example, you know, those of you who have real jobs, you know, I, I don't mean that. I, I mean that where you you know you have to be at work at nine and you get until five, and you know pretty much what, what you're going to be doing during the day. We we don't. I mean I. We usually know uh, maybe a day or two, three days at the most before a job that you've got the job. You go to an audition, your agent may call you and say, uh, tomorrow I want you to go at 10 o'clock to such and such a studio or such and such an advertising agency and you'll be auditioning for this particular product. So you go and then you'll either get a call within a couple of days saying you got that job and it records two days from now at such and such a time, or you won't hear anything, which means you didn't get that particular job. Right, and usually you don't hear anything. You don't know. Yeah. Uh, you don't know why you didn't get the job. You, you know, you just know you didn't hear anything about it. And, or sometimes there are things what they what they used to call first refusals, uh, which meant you're in the run. Mm -hmm. So they say, oh, you got our first refusal for next Wednesday. You know, are you available next Wednesday? Of course you're available. I don't know if, I'm sorry, Peter, I don't know if this still holds true, but at one point, uh, I saw I saw the figures that, it was in some trade magazine, that you were a successful voiceover commercial announcer if you won one out of 15 auditions that you did. Hmm. One out of 15. That meant you were successful because you do lots and lots of auditions. So it just gives you an idea of, you know, now you may get lucky and in the period of a month you may, you know, do 20 auditions and get five or six of them. That's a hell of a good month. Did you ever do one? Why do you want to do two? I wasn't, I wasn't going to bring that up. Let's see. One out of every. I go, I go with different people, I don't always go with me. Oh. I, I fool them like that. <laughs> Sometimes I go yeah. as Ken Lawrence. Yeah. Huh? Ken Lawrence. Different names. Don't you do that? Do you do different names? Huh? Sometimes yeah, I, I do that too. I go as Lance Stardust. <laughs> that explains so well. yeah. Yeah. This is uh, for both of you. What's the uh, oddest uh, voice acting job that you guys ever done? Hardest? Uh, oddest. Oddest. Oh, weirdest. Oh, oddest. He said oddest, Grandpa. Strangest, decade, <laughs> big. Hottest. Well, then none of them are hot. <laughs> because this is New York. This is we don't do these in Florida. It's hot down here. Yeah, that, that's good. Thank you, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> oddest, the oddest job. <laughs> well, oh, I. Think oh, I never it's a good question. I've never asked. I think the strangest experience that I ever had in voice acting was uh, a long time ago when we do um, uh, uh, dubbing foreign films, which really doesn't happen that much anymore in the States. Nowadays, people want to hear the original language and, and read the subtitles. Uh, but there was a period when dubbing foreign films was a thing that you got to do. And I once had a job to dub the voice of a, an actor, it was an Icelandic film, <laughs> which I think I said the, the Icelandic language has no vowels, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and the character was a stutterer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. It really was. It was sheer torture. Because to try to speak English to the <laughs> <laughs> it's very good. Yeah, it is Icelandic. Right? I've never heard them talk, but that, that, yes. that's very good. That's, that's, that's also explain. I didn't know that they have no vowels in their language. It seems which that way. explains why they don't have Wheel of Fortune. We <laughs> <laughs> have that English <laughs> So I would say that was the oddest job I that, ever. That is odd. I, I, I remember one that um, it was for Titleist golf balls. 
And it was um, it was a television spot, but but I was not doing it on camera. They wanted me to. They'd already filmed some. Uh, I think it was Jeff Miller. Was there a golfing Jeff? Miller? Anyway, this is back in the seventies, early eighties, and this one of the top golfers of the day uh, was doing the, this commercial on camera, and uh, he was. They had filmed him underwater. He had hit his ball into a pond, and he was. And he was, he was saying something under, but <laughs> so they wanted me to dub in what he was saying underwater. So I said, okay, that's that's not that hard to do. You know, I said, give me a cup of water. And uh, oh, it was, the word was it was fork, and then he was going to hit the ball, and he said, fork. So I go, oh, that was great. He went, no, no, no. And the engineer came in with a fish a fish bowl. Oh, good lord. Full of water. Put your head in. And he told me to put my head in. <laughs> and I thought, well, okay. It was going to be a network TV spot. And it was probably going to make, you know, 40 grand, 40 grand a year. But And I started to do it, and I thought, you're not going to put the microphone in there, are you? <laughs> but that's when I put my head in, and he had a towel around. Really? Put my head in, and <laughs> but the funniest thing was, it sounded just the same when I went like this. Uh, <laughs> and probably that's what they used anyway. So that was the oh, oddest one. Good question. Wow. I've never been asked. You sure it doesn't sound like roar? Roar. <laughs> roar. <laughs> Maybe that's what he was yelling. You whore! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think, I'm sorry, that I think it was, and then the charming lady with the camera, and I'm going to keep saying she's charming because she's going to be taking her picture. <laughs> What's that on your arm? Oh, that's a, a music player that um, you can I'm not wearing an outfit. You mean your right? clothes have music? Well, not this. I brought outfits to wear for the weekend, but I came straight from work, so I'm not changed yet into my right. costumes. But they have music? Wow. Yeah. I, my, some of my costumes have sound effects. You need to come up here because this is much more interesting. So my outfits have stains. I don't have anything now. I'm not even on time yet. I came straight from work. Okay. Well, I was just curious. Wow. I don't know what your question is probably. Hey, just, forget it. I don't care. Try it anyway. Gentlemen, just, gentlemen, just want to thank you again very much for being here for one. It's wonderful seeing you. Um, you were talking before, obviously, the camaraderie amongst you in the studio uh, here. We were talking at your table about everyone all in the same room and a uh, certain outtake that's been floating around the internet. <laughs> um, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, my question is, do either of you gentlemen have any personal uh, voice Some recordings? Like no, <laughs> personal voice recordings from any of your time together, you know, things that the general public never would get to hear. <laughs> I don't. I do not. Well, we do have. What we do have is a wonderful video that Lynn Lipton, who played Chitara on Thunder Dance, made. Remember that one? Yeah. I guess. She made it as a Christmas. I still have it. She made it as a Christmas gift for us back in. Well, the show had been on a couple of years. So probably in '87, she made it. '86 or '87. <clears throat> She bought a, a video camera, which I think those were fairly new back then. Yeah. No, but yeah. So. <laughs> anyway, uh, she, she brought it to the studio one day while we were recording two shows. And uh, when she wasn't on, on mic, you know, she was just walking around filming us doing okay. That's yeah. different things, outtakes and all. And then she would film out in the lunchroom, you know. And, and she, then she put it all together and gave each of us a copy of it on. on uh, DVD, I guess. The mind, yeah, it, it, it degraded. Really? Yeah. Uh, and so I just, I don't have it anymore. Yeah. Well, I haven't played mine in a long time. Mm -hmm. And I have asked her as recently as uh, last three weeks ago when we were in uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Yeah. She joined us for a, a, a Connecticut Comic Con, which clearly I thought they, they named it Comic Con with two N. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 And um, sometimes you have to spell the jokes out. That's what I'm <laughs> so I, I, uh, I asked her while we were sitting there one day, I said, 
I just remember that because people ask a lot of times, do you have any old pictures of why you're filming? And, and I said, you know, the fans would love to see it. Very much so. And she said, no, I made that just for us. I want to keep it just for us. I said, well, uh, okay, <laughs> bitch. I've <laughs> 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 always referred to Chitara as the original Thundercats Hope. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, Hope, Thundercats Hope. Why did we say Hope? Hope. 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 Oh. But there, that does exist, and it, it was actually a really. <coughs> I mean, you get to see yeah. some, some of us napping while the other ones were recording. And, <laughs> and um, a lot of takes on that. <clears throat> now, I'll, other than that, I'm sorry. Other than that, I don't think anybody bothered to take because you have to realize we, this is what we're doing for a living. You know? Of course. And you just don't go around taking pictures. Well, not even so much that, but how about audio recordings that the studio had that obviously never made it onto air? Well, so the outtakes are from that, of course. You know. Yeah, that's just one little clip, though. I was wondering oh, no, if you guys... Oh, no, there are many of them. There are many of them. <laughs> <laughs> you guys all have heard some of the outtakes from yeah, yeah. Thunder yeah. Cats and Silver Hawks. I could play it for you if you wanted, but... <laughs> yeah. oh, there are children. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know if you've ever heard the Silver Hawks outtakes, but my favorite one is Fantasy Hunting Dolphins. Oh, man, I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I, would, I would just say that just to demonstrate that Larry and I are not actually twins separated at birth. I think that's pretty obvious. <laughs> uh, Larry, uh, freewheeling, you know, just let it all go, yeah, he's saying what he's thinking and all that. And I remember very specifically in that, during that experience of recording these things, wanting, saying, yeah, watch your language. <laughs> because this is all being recorded. And who knows where it's going to go and all that. And apparently that was important enough to me uh, that that was a consideration. Had, so there's no record of You had person. foresight. Well, because I remember thinking back then, now we're talking about them in the mid-80s, you know, yeah. when there was no internet, as we know it now. And back then, uh, there, were, there were always, quote, outtakes from any Anytime you got a bunch of actors on a stage or on a set or... Uh, for a microphone studio, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have outtakes. Somebody's gonna fluff a line and everybody else is gonna respond to it in a funny way. Well, it used to happen to them. We used to, we used to joke that the, the engineer, somebody would say, that's gonna be on, on Jeff's um, Christmas party reel. Yeah. <laughs> Meaning, probably recording engineers, whenever they had a bunch of friends together, I'm sure they would say, you wanna hear what, uh, <laughs> what happens in the Thundercat sessions when, <laughs> that, that, that never gets on the air? <laughs> they would play it for them. One day, so we have to track some of them down then. <laughs> yeah. One day at about 1998 or whatever, my son says, Dad, listen to this. What's on the internet? <laughs> 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 yeah. So, but you, but you, you, that's right. You were saying, you never know who's going to hear this. Yeah. Oh, don't be stupid, Peter. <laughs> There's no internet yet. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean internet? What is that? <laughs> this is. This lady in the front had a question. Um, yeah, I was wondering if you could both give us examples of like your favorite kind of voice to do and then the voice that's most challenging for you mm. to do. Because I imagine you don't always get to do the easy voices. Probably sometimes you do voices that are mm -hmm. maybe a little bit more difficult. Peter did one of the hardest ones, I think, to do. Uh, well, you already gave us an example show. of kind of one of the hardest things. Well, you did a lot of the rough ones. Was it gravelly voice? There was, yeah, the one that was physically mm -hmm. toughest for me was the demolisher. Thank God it was only one episode. Yeah. Uh, because <clears throat> I don't remember, I, I, we would get the script beforehand to read because we had our parts. We had to, you know, know when we were doing what. And there was the demolisher, which meant there was going to be an audition in the studio. Mm. And because that's how we, you know, found out who was going to do uh, what guest character. And so the day before, whatever it was, I thought, you know, demolish. So, okay, let me think of a voice. And I came up with this harsh, gravelly voice. And even as I was coming up, I said, okay, I have to find a way to do this that's not going to hurt so much. Uh, and so I kind of worked on it a bit and had, the, you know, did the episode, and by the end of the episode, it, you know, as much as I was careful, as careful as I could be, it really, you know, I, could, I, I couldn't have done another <laughs> episode after that one. Uh, so that was probably the hardest. Do it for us. No, I won't. 
I'm the demolisher. Yeah, I've come here to the world to tear out a place up on our Two or three of them in the course of the show that, that were really something like gravelly that. like that. I, I didn't, I, I think I did, uh, um, I did Jaggle Man, but was not, it was like, we must get the Thundercats, yeah. <laughs> but it was not like, Thing about his voice. Even Monkey is sort of like that. Monkey, that's when I was thinking of yours. Monkey is a regular character. Yeah, but with all the was like that. Too. And so when he had to yell, yeah. you know, we'd do, we'd do the sound effects at the end of the episode, because they'd save that, yeah. you know, to save your voice. We'd do the, the yells and the screams and the fighting sounds and all that at the end. So yeah, when Monkey and had a big, and then the episode where Monkey and took over the world. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. yeah, that was, that was. Yeah, I remember, you're always you know. going, when you were doing Monkey and because you really belt it out the <laughs> yeah. like yeah. that. And speaking when he would speak his lines, it all had to carry and have sound. And but it, it, mm -hmm. you know, that same, that like Larry was saying, that raspy song. I didn't, fortunately, uh, have any of those that was really raspy like that. Um, on commercials and on program narration, I, I did for years, I did a show called Best Week Ever on VH1. Oh, yeah. oh, thank you. And that was kind of rough to do because it was. It's the third week of February, 2010, the best week ever. We <laughs> <laughs> did an hour of that, you know. Um, so that would get a little rough at the end. And I use that same voice on Skittles commercials. Mm -hmm. Feel the rainbow, taste the rainbow. Wow. But that's all I ever had because I only have to say six words for them. So. Yeah. Uh, he, I did. Boy, what was with me and the raspy voices? I did a character. Well, we for, all said, give it to Peter. Yeah. Well, for, uh, more recently, um, for a video game called, I think it's called Dark Shadows, Dark Shadows 2, something like that, where I was the uh, little creature companion to one of the lead characters, and he ended up sounding like the evil twin of the, the, um, the Geico Gecko. <laughs> cool. but for less money. <laughs> a lot less money. Um, so he was a cockney sort of fella, little cocky guy. He said, oh yeah, we'll get him. We'll kick him right in the jumpies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he should be chilling, take that line. Oh, why am I doing that? <laughs> I sometimes get a little raspy when we're doing Cocoa Puffs. I've been doing Cocoa Puffs for 30, 35 years. When they went over and over. Yahoo! I'm Cocoa for Cocoa Puffs! Cocoa for Cocoa Puffs! <laughs> I know it's a dumb joke, but it's not hard to do. I mean, the, the silly things we get to do. Uh, for a period of time, I was Inspector Clouseau for Owens Corning, housing, ins you know, insulation with the commercials. Um, a silly thing, sort of the odd question about odd jobs we had to do. The the cookware, the French cookware company, Le Creuset, heavy stuff, the, the, the enamel, heavy steel pots and all, they would include a VHS, this going back, I guess, a year or two, a VHS tape of instructions with a chef, a French chef, to help people get the most out of the <clears throat> Le Creuset. Uh, well, it turned out the French chef's English, his French accent made the English hard to understand. So, I got the job of redubbing the French chef with a French accent, but a French accent that Americans could easily understand. <laughs> so, a faux French accent. A faux French. Ooh. <laughs> See, they don't use the French. Quel dommage. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Larry, if oh, I oh, 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 la la. <laughs> you like me to pinch your bottom? That's all the French are. <laughs> but if I may say, I mean, you, you have such a naturally deep voice. I mean, somebody like Wiley. Not really. <laughs> That's acting. <laughs> but I mean, somebody like Wiley Kid. I mean, that must have taken its toll on. That was him. No, part of me. That Wiley was Wiley Cat. Yeah. Oh, Wiley Cat. Yeah, Wiley Cat. Yeah. Um, yeah. But wow. But, but, yeah, but, I'm but, sorry. But, that that took me off. So, <laughs> don't I also have a deep and manly voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you think so, yes. <laughs> But the higher voices are not that hard to maintain. Uh, it's when you have to get down into the low gravelly like this, you know. Okay. In a world where everyone is dead. 
in a world. That's what I said. Anybody else? Yeah. For each of you, what was your favorite episode to record? I don't know. Well, um, or maybe I guess I yes I do, and I don't remember the the, the name of it or the number. <laughs> Uh, as well, I say that because most of them do. Well, they know. Yeah. I love it when somebody says, they, uh, Mr. Kenny, in episode 126. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 I don't want to cast dispersions, but some of you people are scary. <laughs> <laughs> it's an animator thing. I don't know. But I. Um, What's the question? No, I forgot. <laughs> Interesting episode. Yes, uh, it was when Lionel, when Lionel was a little, was a young boy, so it was probably one of the first episodes. Yeah. And that was a little challenging because it, it had to sound like Lionel, but it still sound like Lionel, but when he was like ten years old, you know. So I just ended up, you know, being myself and talking like like I talk and everything, but just make a little bit higher, higher pitch, you know, and it worked. Yes, kept the job. They didn't fire you. We're still here. We're, yeah, here. we're, we're, talking. we're <laughs> answering the questions, ain't we? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, uh, sort of, uh, interesting episodes, fun episodes. Uh, certainly the one where Monkey and got to take over the world uh, because, you know, he crashes and burns in the end. And it was such <laughs> great fun. Um, one of my favorite guest characters that I did was Hachiman, the samurai warrior. I've mm -hmm. spoken to a couple of you about it. Um, and so, to, you know, to get to do that. That was that was great fun too. You know, and a lot of the episodes were were just a joy to do because for me, I, I was relatively new to the the job, so to speak, and I got to work with people who had been doing it for a while, and were professionals, in it, and I'd known, they'd seen their names, heard about them over the the, the years I've been in the, in the you know the business before them. And so and people like Larry, honestly, and Bob McFadden, and um, Earl Hammond, and, and Earl Hyman, you know, really talented uh, uh, folks that I got to work with. And as was, as had been the case for me, generally speaking, as a newcomer earlier on, I would meet people that to me were celebrities. But for the most part, in the world of voiceovers, everybody here is just regular folks, and they treated me just as if I was one of the gang. And it, it, was, it was kind of a, you know, an awakening for me. It was like, wow, they, like, I'm, like I'm an equal. You know, inside I'm going, <laughs> hey, they like me. I'm a kid out of the, I'm like in one of them. It wasn't that. We figured you'd do our taxes for it. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't. Though. Hey, no. And it's good, probably a real good thing for you. <laughs> so that, you know, for me, then the now to be in the studio with four experienced professionals in this, you know, and here I am, and I'm one of the gang. I get to audition for things. I, you know, get some of the parts. I don't get some of the parts, and the fun goes on. You know, you know why? Because you were great. Because you did a great mm -hmm. job. No, I mean you were new at it, and we all knew you were new. But the minute you started doing it, we thought, man, this guy's got it. You know. Well, that's the kind, that's the, the example of the sort of kindness that people exhibited, you know, in the, in the business. And, uh, that's what made it so much fun to be in this business. Because the people you would meet in the community yeah. that would build, they the guys who knew all the latest jokes when you'd meet in an audition. Um, the people you'd, you'd get a little friendlier with, you go to lunch, you, you know, spend some time, whatever. Uh, that was one of the great things about the business. I think we all, everybody in our business, have any sense at all realizes how lucky we are to be making a living at something that we love doing. You know, I mean, you think about it. It's, we all, you know, I always had this. I always had this feeling that someday God is going to come down to earth, and she's going to say, <laughs> "Oh, quit pandering! Quit pandering!" And look at us and say, "All right, so you guys, you do." Well, and how much money do you make? Well, no, 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 no. 
That shit's over. No, no. <laughs> From now on, you get a little cubicle like everybody else. And you make this amount of money, and this is what you need and you, to buy. You start with a stack of paper over here, yeah. and you move it over here, one sheet at a time. Credits and by the window, debits by the door. <laughs> <laughs> when you were an accountant, you know what you did? Credits by the window, debits by the door. That's how I would have done it. I took accounting, a couple of accounting courses in school, and that's what it. You're right. That's but you guys talk. had no idea that when you came in here, there would be that many questions and answers involving the world of accounting. Learn <laughs> <laughs> something. Yeah, do you mind? Can you do your famous Lionel? Can I do my famous lion though? Yeah. I sure. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> oh, no, I can't do that. Okay. I'd have to oh. charge you. Of course oh. I can. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like you to do that? Oh. Yes. Yeah. First we'll do. Sword of the Bowmans, come to my hand. I, lion -O, command it. Thunder, 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 thundercats. Ho! about 12 years old walked up to me at, I was in San Antonio, Texas, doing a Comic Con. And he walked up to me and he said, can you still do it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kid, I can still do it. Well, what's so great about him? <laughs> oh, here we go again. <laughs> Sibling rivalry. Good <laughs> question. Yes, yeah, sir. Like, either whether it was with Thundercats or any other characters, when you get it, do they give you a direction they want the character to go, or do they just say, here, make it up? No, you don't make it up. You, 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 you I mean, it's all scripted. Well, I mean, like, you mean, like, like, with Tiger, like with Tigra. You mean the voice? Yeah, well, you know, the, developing the voice of the character, like the Tigra, did they give you a direction, like uh, how they wanted him there to is be? A, yeah, there is a general, always at least a general, Direction. Uh, Tigra, an adult superhero, <laughs> male, <laughs> you know, so they're right away. The right away is probably not going to sound like that. <laughs> right. You know, uh, so there is that general direction. They'll tell you about it. When we auditioned for the show, uh, I, I recall we walked into, a, uh, at least when I did, I walked into this room and they, room and they had the walls were plastered with drawings of the characters. And of the Thunder Tank, and of all the yeah, you're not talking about the studio, right? You have a right. No, oh office. no, no. When we when we first went to uh, the offices to audition, yeah. Yeah. Before, before we ever knew we got the job, uh, and they, and they would hand you a synopsis of what the show is going to be about because nobody has heard, you know it was a new show, and then each character uh, they would say uh, like a paragraph. Uh, Lionel is young. He's he's um, he's. Um, Naive? Impulsive. Naive, naive, thank you. <laughs> yeah. He's an impulsive, impulsive yeah. youth. Yeah. yeah. And a, a little bit of a brat sometimes. So they would tell, they would tell you things about that. You know, I'm sure what they said about Tiger. And uh, so you go from there. And then you see what he looks like. And you kind of start getting an idea. Here's how I'm going to do it. Now with the Thundercats, we each played a Thundercat and a, to begin with, a mutant. Uh, at least one. And then by the time the show was over, the five or six of us had each done hundreds of voices. <laughs> but um, as you recall, the Thundercats themselves were not, quote, cartoon voices. They were the voices of people. Mm -hmm. So they were basically our voices. lion -O was my, I always tell people, it's my voice. It's, the only difference is it's, it's more dramatic. I might sit here and say to you, sort of, omens come to my hand. I, lion -O, command it. Come on. On the show, it's I Lionel no command it. You're, that's acting, you know. You do that. <laughs> but with the mutants, of course, then you had to come up with something. I recall when when they showed me Jackal Man, my first thought was, and he had this chubby, he's like licking his lips, you know. And uh, my first thought was a jackal. A jackal is what is a jackal? It's sneaky and shrewd and wily. And then I started thinking. One of my references for him was one of my favorite television shows, Rocky and Bullwinkle, when I was a kid. And there was a, a character, Snidely Whiplash. Who was a villain. I'm going to get you now. <laughs> so I put a lot of that into Jackalman. Jackalman, if you think about it, is We must get the Thundercats, yeah. <laughs> greasy kind of thing, you know? It came naturally to you, Yes, it did. <laughs> naturally greasy. Very. Yeah. And that, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, the idea of, uh, you know, where do you find voices, 
it, to a large extent, depends on what your experience is, too. When, at that period of time, and for gentlemen of our approximate ages, we could still reach back into the black and white movies and the, the archetypal voices of people like Peter Lorre and Boris Karloff and Bela Lugosi and, you know, that... Danny, you... Okay, I see it. Sure. Yeah. Okay, that's good, that's good. That's good. You're with us. Uh, so, you know, we had those kinds of references as well as whatever was, you know, going on more uh, recently at the time. Um, and then hopefully you can bring some creativity, as Larry's describing. You know, you start with something that you've heard and then build on it, build on it and make it appropriate for... You're right, and when you, you mentioned Lugosi, because of course Count Chocula was, you know, Count Draco. Mm -hmm. So that's what I got the I think. And Frankenberry uh, was Frank Boris Karloff. Karloff. Boris Karloff. Based on the Boris Karloff. Boris Karloff. Boris Karloff. Boris Karloff. In fact, well, <laughs> that's, that's embarrassing. My first demo reel, that reel to reel uh, tape that I was telling you about, had some of that kind of stuff on it. Me trying to do the, the you know, Peter Laurie or, or, or Boris mm. Karloff or something, because even the sound mm. of an elephant. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, Peter oh, Laurie was, God. remember Peter Waldron? Oh. Peter Waldron was the voice of Booberries. Sarah Booberry, oh. and he was doing video doing I like blueberries. Yes. I, my favorite singer yeah. is blueberries, Rick. <laughs> so, so yeah, so you bring whatever you have in you, you know, where you experience. Hopefully, you have access to it, uh, and then you know, make something out of it that sells, <laughs> that gets you the job. Uh, yeah. Gentlemen, we have time for one more. Okay. Um, All right. Did you ever figure out what the sound plan? <laughs> <laughs> I have been told, and I forget who told me, and and uh, because they were drunk, I think. <laughs> or you were drunk. Yeah, yeah, I, would, yeah. so I would remember if they were drunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody did say to me once, with some veracity, that uh, it is a, it, it actually is a, a part in some kind of a, uh, an engine, but I don't know. Look, I don't know what. Well, ladies and gentlemen,